So welcome to the Brave Bold Brilliant podcast. I'm your host, Jeanette Linford, and I am here today with Vicky Martin. Now, Vicky Martin is a medical tattooist and mind reprogrammer. She's also the creator of the VMM method. So we are going to hear today all about Vicky's journey, the tremendous mission that she is on to make an incredible difference in this world. So Vicky, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Jeanette. It's absolutely amazing to be here. I'm so proud to be a part of such an incredible title, Brave, Bold and Brilliant. <laughs> well, you are the epitome of that. And we're going to get into why that is actually, Vicky. So I think a great place for us to kick off would be to hear about a little bit about your journey, really, because you've got an interesting start and then what compared to what you're doing now. So tell us all about it. Okay, so I started out in a corporate world, um, being an auditor for a big company. And there's a story, a whole story there. But, you know, I ended up leaving the company and I had some finances from it. And I decided that I wanted a complete career change. So I decided to become a tattooist, as you do. (laughs) (laughs) That then led me to do more tattooing on the face, which is like tattooing eyebrows, eyeliners, all that kind of stuff. And then that led me into more medical tattooing, being able to tattoo nipples on women that have had breast cancer, being able to color in scars so they don't stand out so much. Um, And during that time, I also studied all the mindset and mind reprogramming. Um, I'm qualified in NLP. I'm a hypnotist. And I've recently qualified in something called a subconscious dominance. And we talk to your mind through your fingers. Anyway, yeah. So um, what my method that I created is the Vicky Martin method. And it combines the artwork, the tattooing, and the mind reprogramming together. So when you come to me, not only do I allow you to feel more complete on the outside, but the most important part is to love yourself on the inside and see that life hands you situations. And when you get through them, you recognize your strength. And if you dig deep enough and look in the dirt, down there is a diamond. So I love people to leave me I'm feeling complete on the outside, but just so strong on the inside. So I teach it worldwide. I travel all around the world teaching it. Well, used to. Um, I'll be doing that again. (laughs) Um, I've got a franchise business. And now I do also unstoppable um, talks, unstoppable business. Um, There's just loads of stuff. And I just keep on growing. So that's me in a nutshell. Wow. I mean, what a transition from being an auditor in the corporate world to well, I know you do more than this, but tattooing nipples. I mean, I know. This, is, this is quite an extreme. <laughs> what would people say from your previous life as an auditor, knowing what you do now? And are you still in touch with people from, from that sort of early, earlier stage of your career? So I'm going to try and be very politically correct. I was a woman in a man's environment years ago, say mm. 25 years ago, and I wasn't treated a way a person, man or woman, should be treated. So, uh, Jeanette, I sued them and I won. And yeah, Um, and I and it was a big company. And that then gave me the uh, funds to be able to completely transform my life. And I wanted to reap my own rewards. So, no, then probably they probably don't care what I'm doing now. But thank you for being horrible to me, because do you know what? It was the best thing that ever happened. Isn't it crazy? The hard things at the time are just your wins in the future. Oh, you know, 100 percent, actually, Vicky, because you're so right. And, and at the time when you're going through stuff, whatever it might be, personal, career, business, and you can be in a really dark place with some things, can't you? And actually, yeah. you know, after the event with hindsight, so often people say it was the best thing that happened to me. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's there's sort of a bit of a divine justice in all of this, really, Vicky, from what you've just described there. You know, as a woman in business, not being treated in the right way in, in that environment, having the victory that you had eventually. And now what you do to help other women make themselves feel whole and complete in such a meaningful way. It's just sort of quite a nice rhythm to it in there, in my mind. Yeah, I mean, the story, there is a huge story there, but I actually was a recluse for four years because of it. 
And it's crazy. I wouldn't leave the house. I would. And it's crazy how with the right mindset, with, you know, looking after yourself and changing, because your life is what you think it is. How now, when I look back, it's just, it was such a gift. And, and, and all of your stories that you have just give you the power to be able to help other people because they know that you've walked that same path. So it's just a gift, a gift, a gift. Yeah, yeah. So gosh, so so for four years then after that you were you were pretty much housebound and reclusive with, with everything yeah. you were doing. Wow. And and how how did you manage to to jump to get yourself in a place to move on from that then, Vicky? Because we were talking about being in a dark place and it sounds like that was a pretty pretty horrid time for you after that event. Yeah. You know, um that's when I started studying how the mind works and when people were horrible to me, I had this filter system in my mind and I won't go into everything, but your mind notices what you look for. And my mind had made the conclusion that people were horrible, that the world was horrible and you couldn't trust anybody. So it frightened me to go out. But actually, crazily enough, one day a dog got run over outside my house and it was a gift and nobody claimed her. And I went and got her and I took her to a vet's and all of these people started helping me and I started to notice that actually there's a lot of beauty in the world and that's when I started working on myself and I just started to push myself out a bit more and the more you push yourself out the more I realized that I think I was a bit of a victim before if I'm honest but I started to notice if I thought differently and if I made mistakes that's how I grow I started to just gain confidence in myself and you just I think once you start the roller coaster of moving forward moving forward it was just like it just took off for me and I just kept then making myself brave, bold and brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I see what I see what you did there, Vicky. I see what you did. <laughs> You're very on brand. You're very on brand, love. <laughs> no, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. But the, honestly, I mean, because anyone listening to this that, that might be in a bit of a sticky situation themselves or not feeling so great you're absolutely right that internal dialogue and the stories that we sell you know tell ourselves and seek and you shall find I guess to a certain extent as well and uh, I mean that's yeah. an incredible turnaround that you made personally from where you were to, to kind of you know coming out of that that's incredibly inspiring um yeah did you do that obviously the reclusive aspect of it Vicky did you was that sort of very much on your own basis that you managed to make that change? Or did you have people around you that were close to you that were helping and supporting you? Because I'm interested in that as well. Do you know, it was very tough. I have the most amazing family. I was, you know, um, but I think I weirded them out. People, I wouldn't answer the phone. I wouldn't let them in. Um, I don't know if they knew how to handle me. And as much as the small thing of a dog being injured outside my house. Um, I had to leave the house because I'm a massive animal lover. I'm a vegetarian. I just love, love natural spirits of animals. It forced me to do something. And I, I really feel that along with something else, I won't talk, well, I won't go into too much, but um, I really felt that that just allowed me to see the beauty of human beings, that there's a lot of kindness out there. And, and that's what just, I just, that's what, like just snapped me out of it and the second thing that snapped me out of it was I was driving to I had to get some petrol so I was like oh my god I've got to get some petrol because I was always I would have a cap on if I went out I'd have sunglasses on I'd have headphones on so that I felt like I couldn't be seen and I went to this garage and this shows how old I am there was a tape cassette <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you <laughs> um, there was a tape cassette called feel the fear and do it anyway and for some unknown reason, I bought it. And, I, and as I listened to it, as I was driving, um, it, just, it just triggered. It just, I felt like everything just clicked in alignment, that it was a sign or a guide, or I just started to open my mind up to notice a different way of thinking. And, you know, it's really crazy how I talk a lot in my talks about two people, two soldiers that go to war that get their legs blown off. You know, there's one soldier who, who when he leaves, um, when he comes home, he feels like his world has fallen apart. He hasn't got his legs anymore. He turns to alcohol and he just sits in his wheelchair. But then you have the second soldier who thinks, right, my legs are gone. I can't do anything about it, but I'm going to work on my upper body and I'm going to win a medal in the Olympics or the Paralympics. The point of the story is the situation is exactly the same for both people. 
It's just how you think about it. And stories like that just make that, that are just so incredible because the second soldier's life is absolutely amazing. And, and he actually exists. His name's Mickey Yule. And I absolutely, I absolutely love him. And uh, so for me, it was about changing the way I thought and being brave and being b- bold <laughs> <laughs> um, and just being able to just go out there and, and think it's fine. Everything will be fine. And if I fail, then that's where the gold is. Yeah. 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 No, honestly, you're spot on. And um, actually talking about, you know, sort of um, servicemen that have had really difficult situations as well. I mean, I, we were saying before I came on air, I interviewed Mark Ormrod, who had, was a, is a triple amputee, had both his legs and one of his arms wow. off in Afghanistan. And, you know, what he's done with his life and, and really literally from being, you know, dead you know, to actually coming back, rebuilding his body, his, his mind, his life, and, and now doing so much good for everyone else in the world. It's, it's incredible. You're right. You, you, you have a choice, don't you? Even to not take action is a choice. And I think that's the thing people don't always think that, you know, so I love that. And maybe it was, maybe it was a sign you raised your vibration, Vicky, and then, you know, things start coming towards you, don't they, in the right way, I think. I believe in that. I believe... I believe a lot in um, uh, energy and uh, it's actually scientifically recorded because a lot of what I do with regards to the mind reprogramming, some people don't necessarily like the airy fairy and some people like the science base, but I think the two together is what's perfect. I think it's good to have the energy and it's good to have the science back behind it and then it covers everybody. Yeah, yeah. Talk about that then, because I'm really fascinated to hear how how you approach it, how you approach it with your, with your clients, uh, the science and okay. the kind of stuff. Yeah, I'd love, love to hear that. So one of the most important things that I've learned about your mind is that your mind cannot not answer a question. So uh, if ever you and I are talking and we might say, oh, what's the name of that actor? And you can't think of the name of the actor. Well, later on in the day, it will pop in your head because your mind will search for the answer to the question. So a lot of my empowerment is asking the right questions. For, for, for you and I, or for me, the worst question I could ask myself is why am I so stupid? Because my brain is then gonna start uh, um, searching for the answer to that question. And that's not a good way for your brain to go. So, you know, for, uh, like for anybody who's listening, the question you wanna ask yourself is, you know, how can I move forward in my business today? Or how can I be um, a better whatever it is you do? For my breast cancer people, one of the first questions I will ask is what has been the best thing that's come out of having breast cancer? Because as much as I haven't walked that path, I have spent so much time with women that they don't run their lives normally anymore. They maybe leave that husband they never wanted to do. They leave that job that they've never been happy with. They value their children. They worship their life more because you kind of, when you feel that something's been taken away from you, you value it more. So that's um, the question that I, that I ask. So I ask a lot of empowering questions with to sort of bring the mind in a different direction um and i talk a lot about what's your dream life what's your dream job and how can you it's like conversational coaching and then at the end of my treatment have you heard of anchoring jeanette i have yes but i bet a lot of people might not have so i want you to explain it but yes please vicky okay so has well anybody listening I'm sure you've heard a song on the radio and it's taken you straight back to a holiday or when you met your partner or you smell aftershave and it's reminded you of your partner or cooking and and it's taken you to uh, your mum's house I've got a very good example of an anchor it's not the most positive one but it explains it really well I had a client who had a husband who used to like to drink And she used to get home from work before him and she would be upstairs and she would hear him come in. She would hear him go to the fridge and she would hear him open a can of lager. When she heard the sound of the uh, the can being open, she would be filled with dread. But she left him. But now whenever she goes to a barbecue or whenever she hears somebody open a can, all of those feelings come back again. So she's anchored a negative feeling to the sound of the can. Um, When lockdown came in, I ran out of uh, face cream. So I put sun cream on my face. And because I always put sun cream on my face when I was on holiday, the smell of the sun cream took me back to holiday. So 
you can anchor a feeling, good or bad, to something you can see, hear, touch or smell. So what I do with my women, I and men, I don't allow them to see the uh, the nipples that I've tattooed um, until right at the end. But right at the end, I would have had this conversation with them where I would be searching for their proudest moments when they felt really healthy um, and just really good moments in their lives where they felt unstoppable. I stand in front of the mirror and I will get them to close their eyes and I will get them to go back to that moment and I will get them to actually see everything as if they were there. When I can see their breathing change, I step out the way of the mirror and then I say, open your eyes. So we connect the two. So that feeling to the image of looking complete again. And I do it three times. And then so then what I've done is every time they see themselves in the morning, those feelings come back and they just remember how strong, unstoppable, brave, bold and brilliant they are <laughs> and um and it's lovely and and then if they want on top of that i can do a seven minute hypnosis but most women just feel completely transformed by the time they they leave my um treatment room wow god this is so incredibly powerful um i know well it must not, be- i know i didn't mean that <laughs> yeah no but yeah you should feel incredibly proud of what you do because you you literally change the lives of of hundreds, thousands of women, and not just them, but their relationships, their partners, their their family, their friends, you know, it's like dropping a pebble in a pond, isn't it? And that ripple impact um, is, is just phenomenal. So you should feel incredibly proud of what you of what you do. It's uh, rightly so. Absolutely. Well, Jeanette, you know, um, I don't think people really realize how much I get from doing it. You cannot yes. put it in a bottle and buy it. It's, I feel like, it's um, it's part of my journey. You know, all the rubbish stuff from be- before is just brought me to here. And I just feel so flipping blessed that um, I can be at the end of a journey because, you know, it's just incredible being surrounded by strong women that have got to that point in their life where they can recognize that, I mean, it probably doesn't get much harder than what they've gone through and they've got to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit, Vicky, because I think, you know, for someone that's listening, that, that maybe they, they've gone through surgery and have had a hard time and, and maybe they don't know what the options are for them in terms of what's next. How do people find you and, and what's the process that you would go through with someone to get them sort of from where they start there to, to kind of that magical moment at the end that you've just so beautifully described? Oh, and that's beautiful. And that's nice that you say that. And that's why there's a lot of artists that I teach that are the same as well. So if you've had breast cancer, you can have a nipple tattooed at the hospital. You can. And I am not going to say anything awful, but I feel I've only probably seen one or two nipples that have been tattooed at a hospital that I think is acceptable for what a woman's gone through. So you can get something done at the hospital, but it tends to be one color, a bit of a circle. So you can have that done. And if you've had that done, you can still reach out to me. I do a lot of work um, and I call it a donation day. I'm lucky. I make a really good living teaching. So a lot of the work I do, I have a donation box and you put however much you want to put in there, you put in there. That's the way I work. You can pay me if you want as well, but I, if you go to my website, which is vickymartinmethod.com, um, you'll see there's payment options. You can reach out to me. But also, because I'm in the South, I'm in Reading, Berkshire, but also every artist that I've trained in Australia, America, everywhere, Spain, Romania, for them to be on my register, which is on my website, they have to donate their work as well. And everybody believes the same. So what I would say is go to my website, if you can't find someone on my registered um, provider, provider registered artists, then reach out to me because there's a lot of beautiful, beautiful people that are, are ready and actually get the same feeling that I get that would be happy to help you if you didn't have the funds. I am also recognized by uh, private clinics, so I can take their money. <laughs> 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 um but yeah, so that's how you'd reach me. You could also um, find me on Instagram um, and connect with me through that way as well, which is Vicky Martin Method. No, it's Vicky Martin VMM. 
Yeah, brilliant. So when someone, when a when a woman decides to to kind of get on board, they come to see you. The process itself, or the procedure itself, the tattoo, and 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 also that the whole kind of mind reprogramming that you do. How long does that take? Is it is it one session? Is it multiple sessions? You know, because it sounds pretty involved, really, uh, from what you've described. Do you know, it's I've mastered it down that um, it kind of flows more naturally now. The anchoring at the end that what I said before literally takes about three minutes. And for anybody who's worried about because some people are a little bit frightened about the whole mind side of things. It's not something you have to have done. If you feel that you're confident enough and you're happy, then that's fine. You don't have to do that. Um, I'm probably if I was doing a double mastectomy, you're looking at two and a half, three hours with me. Um, but I can be quicker. I'm a talker. I love it, though. I act- The time just goes like, <laughs> you know, like being on Clubhouse. It's just like, oh, my goodness, where's yeah. three hours gone? <laughs> <laughs> Which is exactly where we actually came across each other. So I'm very grateful for Clubhouse. But yes, you're right. It can take a lot of time. So, uh, yeah, someone could actually be there in the, in the time you spend on a Clubhouse room and they've had both their nipples done, which is amazing. <laughs> wow. And wow. And all. Also, I always do it in two stages as well, because skin is an organ. Everybody's skin's a different thickness. You can never guarantee the color. Well, you can never guarantee the color full stop because it's in a living organ. But I always do it in two stages with with like six weeks in between so that I can bring them back in. I can check the work. And usually when they come and see me the second time, they're just they're so happy that I don't need to do any more reprogramming. But I'm always there if they need it. I'm a server. Uh, I love serving. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can see that. I mean, you, you just light up when you talk about what you what you do. I can hear it in your voice. I can see it in your face. Anyone that's watching this on YouTube is going to really be able to see that as well. So, no, it's fa- it's fabulous. So, Vicky, I want to talk a little bit about the challenges that you've had in terms of kind of getting the the message out to the world with the business that you have through social media. Because clearly, you know, that hasn't been an easy ride for you. And there's some really interesting angles to this that we're going to delve into now. So do you want to just take us through the social media challenges that you've had, how you've approached it, and then what's coming next? Because otherwise, you could be the best kept secret in the world, couldn't you? Um, And we don't want that. Oh, thank you. Um, Okay. So, like I said before, you can have the artwork done at hospitals, which is fine. Um, But I think women deserve more time and more energy. And hospitals are amazing at healing. So I don't want to badmouth the hospital because they do an incredible, incredible job. Um, but, But the trouble that I have is that whenever I post images on social media so that other women can see how incredible and super realistic, and I'm talking super realistic nipples, um, and mindset, I was constantly getting blocked and shut down. And I think what's even more frustrating is the women that I work on want to show other women within mastectomy groups how great they can look again, and they are getting shut down and, and blocked. And then mm-hmm. so artists I train, they can't show anybody. And it's the most frustrating thing ever because I have been shut down, blocked, accounts removed a um, hundred times. And every time I try to reach out to Facebook, I try to get hold of anybody. It's just falling on deaf ears. No one ever responds to you. No one ever listens. So I thought I have to do something. So I bought a 20 foot inflatable boob and me and some of the women that I had actually uh, worked with and artists, we went to Facebook and we installed it in front of Facebook head office's doors. <laughs> and do you know what? Uh, the BBC got hold of it, but they had to let Facebook know that we were coming the morning we were coming. So um, they put barriers up and there was security there. And I was like, oh, no. And I can remember, Jeanette, thinking we're not going to be able to do it. I had TV cameras. I had everything around me. And the guy from the BBC, I said, they put barriers up. And he said to me, just do it. Like it was, as you leave Facebook, there's like this corridor. As you walk in, there's like this, like this alley. um, And all all the employees have to go through that way. So the, the end of the alleyway that you have to walk into Facebook was public property. So he said, just do it, just do it here. And I was like, will I get arrested? And he went, only if the police come along. So I, I said to Roger, <laughs> Roger, the boob blower up. And I was like, just 
get, I was like, just get that boo blown up as quick as possible. I was like, how long will it take? And he was like, 20 minutes. So I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and as I was waiting for it to blow up, I looked to my left and I saw two policemen walking towards me and I thought, oh no, it's all over. And they walked over to me and they went, are you protesting? And I said, no. And they went, all right then, and walked on. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, how did this actually go ahead? So um, the boob eventually got blown up and all the media, um, like the BBC were there, the Daily Mail were there, it got to Fox News, it got to America. It just, it just went everywhere. Um, Facebook, and then I tried to walk into Facebook to say I'd like to speak to someone, but they, they wouldn't let me in. So what's happened now, Jeanette, is I actually tried to get more blocks because I've got a whole load of PR people behind me and they are not blocking me um, at all. But the problem is I had people from Egypt, just from everywhere saying, well, you're okay, but we still can't post. So... All I'm asking for, and I'm not actually asking for a war, I think social media is the most incredible platform We need support and everything. All I'm asking, I just want to speak to someone in Facebook and say, look, you can be the heroes. Just allow us to blur our images so that women can see how good we can look again. So now, obviously, um, I'm going for phase two. And phase two is so exciting because I was worried about getting arrested because if I'd have got arrested, there would have gone all of my, my training in America. I wouldn't have been able to do anything, but I still did it anyway because I just thought I believe in a higher power. And I just thought if, if, if I get arrested, then there's a story. You know, I just thought I've just got to do it and just see what happens. A lot of people told me not to, but I just went and did it anyway. Um, do you, would you like me to talk about the next event? I would like, well, actually, let, let's just press slight pause. Hold that point for a second. And we're definitely coming back to it for the September campaign. So a lot of people told you not to do it, but you did it anyway. And you were fearful, but you did it anyway. And I think this is such an important point. Um, so I just want you to elaborate on the feeling the fear, but doing it anyway, to which takes mm -hmm. back to that wonderful tape that you, that you read. And then I, then I want us to talk about how to ignore the naysayers when you do have people that maybe aren't necessarily trying to put you off because they're being difficult or, or awful, but maybe it's out of a point of concern for you or whatever. So, so the first point is around facing the fear and doing it anyway. Just talk me through that bit and then we're going to talk about the naysayers. Then we're going to come to the campaign. Is that all right? Yeah. So as we spoke about before at the beginning, I had a fear of people and, and going out and everybody was horrible. And now my mindset over the years has changed because, Jeanette, right, you may know this, but your mind likes what it's used to. So if your mind, if you're used to being with a partner that treats you like dirt, when someone comes along and treats you nicely, your mind doesn't like it because it's not used to it. So it pushes it away. Mm -hmm. So my mind is uh, uh, from being used to being scared and a victim is now my mind loves being frightened. It feels comfortable to push myself. So um, that's why I love doing stuff like that, because I just I just love the fear. Um, it's hard when you have family members, my family are beautiful, saying, you, you know, you could just you could just ruin your whole training, traveling and everything. But I just recognize that a lot of people that will comment on things that you're doing, they comment from their own beliefs. So if within themselves they don't think it's possible, they kind of project it. So what I do is I just keep my eye on the prize. I put my blinkers up and I think this is what I'm going to do. If I look stupid, then I look stupid. But you know what? I would rather look stupid and know that I've tried than spend my life thinking, why didn't I do that? So that is more painful to me than not actually doing it. So I just thought everybody's saying it. I'm doing it anyway. And I just I just focus on it will work out. And if it doesn't work out, then I will learn and grow. And people will know me as being Vicky the trier. <laughs> with, a big boob, with the big <laughs> boob that didn't quite get inflated. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love but it. it. <laughs> but you're so right. And and very often, you know, perspective 
is 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 you know what drives a lot of people's um you know where they're coming from and, and kind of how they portray that across but i think the other thing as well with everything that you're doing vicky your purpose your reason why is so strong and so compelling yeah. that it pulls you towards those actions that you need to take um, yeah. so, you know, I think with a purpose, very often people are either moving away from something, aren't they? Moving away from pain or they're yeah. moving towards something that's really compelling. Um, and, and I guess you've got a bit of both in your in your story, haven't you? You're moving away from the pain of the past in, in some of the stuff that you experience, but you've got this really amazing, compelling reason why that just gives you that courage <laughs> to move forward. So I think that's incredible. Well done. It's really inspiring. It really is. Oh. Well, um, do you know, sometimes uh, someone who's quite important to me said, you know, you're never going to make a change. Like, you know that you can't do this. And that is just like, oh, oh well, I'm going to try extra hard or even watch me. And, <laughs> and I, have you have you heard of a book? I need to finish listening to it. because It's called The Third Door. Um, it's amazing. It's this guy that he said, whenever you think you've you've tried every option to do something, there's always a third door. So, Jeanette, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to apply to be a cleaner on Facebook and I'm going to get in that way. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I can see you in all manner of disguises trying to get into the Facebook <laughs> offices. This is great. You could have an army of people with you, mind. So it might not be you might not be so easily disguised, but this is great. So let's talk about the September campaign then, Vicky, and the phase two, as you uh, you mentioned okay so nobody knows about this yet Jeanette I keep saying on the 17th of May I'm hosting a live zoom because I'm trying to not let Facebook know too much about it this time but actually this time they can't stop us doing what we're doing because what we're doing is is legal so that's good um and I'm not sure when this gets aired out whether it be before or after so I had COVID at Christmas and for some unknown reason, I slept a lot. And you know, when you sleep a lot, you have the most random dreams. Yeah. So this random dream, <laughs> everything I do is like my subconscious popping in my head. <laughs> so I had this most random dream about a bouncy bopper. And I was thinking, so then I sort of got onto Alibaba and I started like messaging people in China saying, can you make a bouncy bopper with boobs? So then this big inflatable boob, this body, like a, you know, like the sumo bodies. Yeah. I sent them an image and I'm having, I've had 20 of these sumo body boobs that are just boobs that we can walk about in. And I've got two other bigger ones. So the plan is I've had loads shipped over to me that we all go and stand in front of the door because they cannot stop us standing where we're allowed to stand. We press the button and we all inflate. <laughs> I love it. Can I come? Can I come? Yes. Be part of this. Absolutely. But Jeanette, what I want this time, because we had a choir there last time, and, and, and last time I think people weren't really sure whether I'd do it, whereas this time I've got more support because it went so crazy. Yeah. My vision my vision is I would love an opera singer. I would love something where it's the most beautiful protest where we just sing our protest and we just stand there. I've had t-shirts that, um, t-shirts that look like you, uh, that your boobs are out. So I've had those made as well. Um, and I've, I've just got loads of stuff coming, but this time what's nice about it is you cannot stop us wearing what we want to wear where we're allowed to stand. So that's what we're going to do. And the plan for this time is that I'm calling everybody from America, Australia, and I'm going to see it's, I, I hope it works out, but I would like to ship them to all the other Facebooks and we all do it on the same day. That's the master plan, but that's whether everybody is involved in other countries. I think they will be, but definitely, definitely London. Excellent. And, and they are, and the offices are near uh, King's Cross, aren't they, Vicky? The mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we could, yeah. we could walk through London. I mean, I was trying to figure out how far Instagram is, but you know, I, I put this inflatable boob on the other day just to, I, I, I'll have to, I'll private send you a picture. I did a vision board of how it's going to look. I'll send it to you. Um, and you can't fit through a door. You can't go in so, cause I wanted to go on the tube, but I just thought, could you imagine? somebody who's rushing to get to a meeting and they can't get through like 20 inflatable boobs they would just be so annoyed they would be so, so I thought maybe don't do that <laughs> well we do want people to be on board with uh, with the with the campaign don't we that's it that's oh, it 
Oh, fantastic. Oh, and how can people support you with this particular protest campaign? You know, what, what, how can people get behind you? Okay, so I've set up a, um, a link. Um, it's called vickymartinmethod.com forward slash stand up to Facebook. And if you put your um, email address in there, it's linked to a campaign that I'm just going to be posting out what's going on, um, you know, what the plan is. So the, um, the Zoom meeting in May is I've got my vision, but I'm also open to ideas, people that want to get involved. So I thought the event isn't until the 1st of September and we know September's going to be like that. Mm. Um, so I just want to see who's on board, who's serious. I'm doing it anyway. I've already got enough people to fill the boobs, but it would just be so cool if you just wanted to come and wear a T-shirt, if you wanted to film it. I need people to film it. I would love drones going over the top as well. I just want to just... I want to flood. I just want to flood the place until someone says, do you know what? I think we need to talk to Vicky. (laughs) (laughs) Excellent. You are most definitely a woman on a mission, I have to say. And actually, on your your bio that you kindly sent me in advance of us chatting here, um, I'm going to read a a little quote, if I may, which I think encapsulates everything that you, you stand for and everything that you've just described. So... Here we go. This is what you said on your bio. I think it might be on it might be on your website as well. What you do today can inspire all your tomorrows. Believe and stand tall. So that is just the perfect summary of everything that you're talking about, the campaign and everything, all the wonderful things you've done so far. And at the end of the day, let's, you know, yes, okay, there's a comedy element to this. But you're changing women's lives and their families. And, you know, so actually it, it is serious as well. This isn't it? Uh, it's the thing. It is, Jeanette. And, you know, nearly every woman I've worked on, they are so on board. I've checked with everybody. Do they find it offensive? Like those that they're like, no, we want we want the, we want the change. So I wouldn't if anybody found that it was that they love it. You know, um, I've got so much support from people because they've all like been with me or I've worked with them and the support is just beautiful I I, I'm excited nervous but excited but I'm feeling the fear and doing it anyway excellent excellent oh I love it I absolutely love it I think that's that's great and I'm so happy that we've been able to have this chat because one you're just doing incredible things two your personal journey is is inspiring as well and you're just helping so many people so I really really appreciate it but Vicky I'm just going to ask you a few final questions if you don't mind Mm -hmm. so can you think of the best piece of advice that you've ever been given yes I've actually got two that that changed not changed changed my life but two that resonated a lot with me um Renee I listened to a talk from Renee Brown or Brené Brown, Renee Brown. And um, a lot of the times we worry about what people may say or think about us. And the best, I mean, she explained it differently, but this is how I explain it. A lot of the time we worry about people's comments, people's opinions, but you have to stop and think, will they, are they prepared to actually get in the ring with you? And if someone ever comments, I have to. So what she said just resonated with me because a lot of the time we listen too much to chat from other people when they're not prepared to get in the ring. So that was something that made me think, yeah, I shouldn't really listen to that. Just keep focused. If someone's prepared to get in the ring with me, then I will listen to them. But if they're not, so that was good. And the second person I absolutely love the piece of advice I got was someone called Joe Dispenser. I don't know if you've heard of him, Dr. Joe Dispenser. Yeah. He says, we, we run our future, our future goals, we, we look at them by using your record of the past. So you might look at doing something, but you've only got your past record to judge it by. And I love every morning laying in bed and imagining my day going the best way possible. And in fact, I do a morning meditation on Clubhouse every morning at 6 a.m. And, and we go through... We imagine our best Friday possible. I've already imagined how today's going to go, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Is it working out so far? <laughs> it's actually working out better. Um, Perfect. <laughs> um, but it was really good because 
that piece of advice is sometimes you do, you, you, you think of a situation and you're just thinking, well, it didn't work out that time. Whereas if you can start imagining your future the best way possible, not only do you grow new pathways and new filter systems in your mind, but you start opening up to new opportunities. I hope I explain that enough to make sense. Yeah, absolutely. No, you're right. You know, um, speak to your subconscious mind again, as you yes. said earlier. So no, two really powerful, uh, powerful messages there. Thank you, Vicky. And can you think of any bad advice that you've ever had that either you took and wish you hadn't or that you it was so bad that you just ignored it and did what you were going to do anyway? Maybe the boob. Yeah, I... <laughs> The boob, but also I think a lot of people, I get, um, I've get. i learned to keep my mouth quiet on spending money on coaches because I think a lot of people think that it's a lot of money for something that you don't physically hold or you have nothing for. So I've learned to not share, not saying you have to spend thousands and thousands on business coaches or anything, but I think I've learned to not tell people that I invest in someone supporting me and helping me because I think having a coach and a mentor is really important for you to brain dump and just to, so I think that's the thing. Um, I've had a few people say, you pay how much? And it's not thousands of, well, it's not a massive amount in our industry, Jeanette, you know that. Yeah. Um, but I've learned to just keep my mouth shut because they're, they're, they're valuing, well, their beliefs on it is different to mine. So yeah, I think that's one thing that I've, I've learned to just ignore and the boob. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Hey, listen, I'm with you 100%, Vicky. I think mentors, coaches, they are they make a material difference to, to totally. progress, 100%. I mean, I mentor one-to-one -one, uh, with my clients and literally they will make such a step change, you know, whether it's adding six figures to their salary or taking their business to the next level. And uh, yeah, 100%, I agree. But not everyone gets that. Um, so I, I totally understand where you're coming from. So. Yeah, I, I think it's so important and energizing and good for your mind to have clarity and just to be able to download everything. Because I think if you can't download everything, somebody, you're like running around with your head and you're just being so unproductive. You would lose that money in your business through not being productive. 100% and the accountability it gives you as well just keeps you on track doesn't it I always think yeah. a mentor is someone that you know they, they've got an interest in you of course and they are there to purely help you get where you want to get to but they've not got a vested interest and that's the difference yeah. so they care but equally they will call you out as well if things aren't quite you know going as, as planned and I think that neutrality of someone that's trodden that path before or can give you that advice and support and accountability is, is absolutely game changing, actually. I, I yeah, it's priceless. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Which is going to bring me to my final question, actually, Vicky. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you'll like this one. I know you will. <laughs> so what does Brave, Bold, Brilliant mean to you, Vicky? To me, it means creating a dream, creating a bold goal, live in it, believe in your power and know that no matter what, if it works out, brilliant. If it doesn't work out, you've learned and grown. So you've moved forward. I think being bold, brave and brilliant is just to be bold, be bold, get that goal and just throw yourself at it because you're going to move forward in life because you'll either fail and learn or you'll win and win. And most of the time you end up winning. Perfect. I love it. That is great. Oh, thank you so much, Vicky. I've so enjoyed chatting with you. I really so have I. It's gone so quickly. <laughs> I know, I know. We'll, we'll have to do a, a take two, Vicky, post the campaign, actually, to see how, how things have got on. I think everyone will be really keen to see what happens. So, um, yeah, good. Yeah. Good luck with that. And um, anyone listening or watching this, please get behind Vicky and the VMM method and the, everything that Vicky's doing is making a material difference in this world and leaving the world a far better place um, as a result of everything you're doing. So thank you so much, Vicky. I really appreciate you. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you in a boob on the 1st of September, Jeanette. I've got one put to the side with your name on. Can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait. I am there. I'm in. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Vicky. Thank you.